Good happy Thursday morning. It's Thursday, July 28, 2022. I'm Riley King, and welcome to this Thursday morning edition of the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's get started right now. First step, one charge dropped for estranged wife of Harmony Montgomery's father. Let's take a listen to that video from WNUR News 9. One charge has been dropped against Kayla Montgomery, the stepmother of missing eight-year-old Harmony Montgomery. Today, a judge signing off on dismissing one count of welfare fraud that led to her initial arrest back in January because the deadline for a grand jury indictment had passed. Montgomery, however, still faces other felony and misdemeanor charges because prosecutors say she lied to DHHS that Harmony was still a member of their household and collected welfare benefits based on that. Kayla Montgomery is currently free on bail and is not directly charged in Harmony's disappearance. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Survivors of Randolph crash described impact aftermath in trial testimony. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Wayfair has everything I need to make my home totally me. Sometimes I'm a homebody. So cozy. You know now that Woody was drunk at the time, right? Yes. I don't know. Valerie Ribeira told the jury she was on the back of a motorcycle with her husband and second in line on the day of the crash. She gave an eyewitness account of the point of impact. Before the crash, uh, did Woody ever come close to you? Did he ever drive to his right? Woody was driving straight until he was exploded. Seven witnesses, all Jarhead Motorcycle Club members or associates, took the stand on day two, giving graphic emotional accounts of the collision and the aftermath. I just saw a big blue black truck just plowing through motorcycles like a bowling ball. Survivors raced to the wreckage, trying to help their friends. I went back to the trailer and crawled under the trailer to check on Mike Ferrazzi. He was um, pinned underneath the rear axle of the trailer. And when I got to him, he uh, he was already gone. Um, somebody grabbed my feet and pulled me out from under the trailer because the truck was on fire. I couldn't get in there to help or do anything. It was the fire got out of control. Um, then I realized we had one in the tree line. And then we realized that there was another passenger in the woods that was deceased and i stayed with woody and uh i said stuff like it's okay brother you're gonna you're gonna be okay you're gonna be all right still a long way to go for jurors in this trial the witness list is long testimony resumes here tomorrow at 9 a.m in lancaster amy cavino wmur news 9 okay and there you go on that video and that report Man trying to remove object from I-93 hit and killed. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. State police say a man from Bristol died when he was hit by a vehicle on I-93. State police say 80-year-old Ernest Duncan pulled off the southbound lanes in San Bernardin just before 11 this morning. He was hit when he went into the roadway to remove some kind of obstruction. Another vehicle then hit the one that hit Duncan. Both drivers were taken to the hospital. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Forest officials warn of uptick in bear activity in White Mountains. Let's take a listen to that video from WNUR News 9. 
U.S. Forest Service has a oh, heads up for anybody heading into the woods this weekend. They say, look out for bears. Black bear activity is in the White Mountains is actually up right now. They posted this picture of a ripped tent where it appears a bear got into somebody else's snacks. Reminding campers tonight to either keep your food locked in the car at night or properly hung, strung up in a bear bag. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Lawmaker criticizes gun stock mountain resort donation to Governor Sununu's 2020 campaign. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. <laughs> A $500 check made out to the friends of Chris Sununu, drawing criticism from a member of the Belknap County delegation tonight. A public body, the Gunstock Area Commission, making a donation to a political campaign, uh, particularly a partisan political campaign, uh, it was just jaw-dropping. It was uh, stunning for me. Representative Mike Sylvia says the donation by the Belknap County-owned property is inappropriate, arguing it's taxpayer money. Whether it was not reinvested into Gunstock or it was not returned to the county directly, that is um, extraordinarily unusual. The check, signed by former general manager Tom Day, who resigned last week. In a statement to News 9, Day disputes this was public money, saying, quote, We are a for-profit entity that has a donation line item in our budget, and we donate to different things to promote gun stock and promote the area and promote skiing in general. We generate our own revenue, and this donation does not affect Belknap County residents because we don't take Belknap County money. Day added last year the resort paid the county hundreds of thousands of dollars, about 1% of its gross revenue. The Attorney General's office tells News 9 it did receive information regarding gun stock today. That is being reviewed to determine appropriate next steps. We also reached out to Governor Sununu's campaign. His campaign manager says the donation is not a prohibited political contribution and the friends of Chris Sununu did nothing wrong in accepting it. Live in the studio, Marissa Tancino, WMUR News. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. DOJ reportedly investigates Trump for alleged January 6 actions, sources say. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. New reporting the Justice Department is focusing part of its investigation into the January 6th attack on former President Trump. Here's ABC's Chief Justice Correspondent Pierre Thomas now. Tonight, sources tell ABC News the Justice Department's investigation is increasingly focused on the actions of President Trump. We're told former White House aide Cassidy Hutchinson is among those now cooperating with DOJ as they investigate Trump's role in the scheme to prevent Congress from certifying Joe Biden's win on January 6th. She's already testified that days before the 6th, the president's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, told her Trump was going to go to the Capitol himself that there was already a plan in the works to disrupt the certification. He looked at me and said something to the effect of, Cass, are you excited for the 6th? It's going to be a great day. We're going to the Capitol. It's going to be great. The president's going to be there. He's going to look powerful. Sources tell us federal investigators are also examining efforts to send fake electors supporting Trump to Washington to disrupt Biden's certification. The January 6th committee showing the slates of fake electors in states Biden had won. Prosecutors have already interviewed former Vice President Mike Pence's chief of staff, Mark Short, and top counsel Greg Jacob, who publicly testified Pence refused to participate in Trump's scheme. No vice president in 230 years of history had ever claimed to have that kind of authority. And federal prosecutors have subpoenaed a number of so-called fake electors and seized the phone of Trump's private attorney, John Eastman. 
A number of witnesses have testified that Eastman repeatedly pushed outlandish strategies to overturn the vote. I said to him, are you out of your effing mind? I said, I, said, I only want to hear two words coming out of your mouth from now on. Orderly transition. DOJ wants to know if President Trump, what he did to put these efforts in motion and whether he understood these strategies might be illegal. David? All right, Peter Thomas with us. Peter, thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos... Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that does it for this morning edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. Thank you for tuning in and watching. Goodbye.